Hello everyone. Now today we will be discussing about the important high yield uh, question will, it will be asked in your summary and that is renal tubular acidosis. We need to understand very clearly about this because this is the high yield topic. Okay. Now this will be useful in our, not only the USMLE but in other part of your exam as well and in the daily life when you manage the patient in the air also. Okay. Now we are talking about renal tubular acidosis. Normally acidosis is present when a patient when a patient is having a chronic kidney damage, if he is a CKD patient, then he will have the acidosis. But if there is a patient who comes to you and there is acidosis who has a normal kidney function previously but presented to you with acidosis and also that is normal NAD gap at acidosis and other feature then we normally think if it is due to the renal cause then we term it as a renal tubular acidosis. Actually renal tubular acidosis is divided into four parts type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Type 3 I have not discussed here because type 3 is due to the uh, high salt intake and it was seen in uh, early 70s, 60 and 70 that few cases, there are a lot of cases actually presented with the high salt intake in a child and they develop tubular acidosis which was intermediate between type 1 and type 2. Okay. And in a patient who have congenitally deficiency of carbonic anhydrase in that patient but it is not usually asked, it is not usually discussed anywhere now in the present situation so we will not discuss type 3. Now coming to the type 1, type 2 and type 4, these three are important to us. To understanding type 1 is known as the distal renal tubular acidosis, type 2 is known as the proximal renal tubular acidosis and type 4 in, is actually separate from renal, it is not actually a disease of your tube but it is so it is called hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis. It is actually not a disease of the tubule, rather it is a disease of your aldosterone level low or unable to aldosterone insensitivity because of that. So it is not a tubule disorder, it is a hormone related issue. Okay. Let's discuss from uh, here type 1. Type 1 is known as the distal renal tubular acidosis. So in the distal part of your nephron, there is tubular damage which has leads to the acidosis. What is that damage? There is a defect in, if you see the collecting duct and collective, I have explained very clearly and a long video is there, long lecture has been performed on nephron physiology and you can see in the previous lecture in the nephron physiology. In the collecting ducts, there are principal cell, okay, this is the principal cell and this is alpha intercalated cell alpha intercalated cell so these two cells are there that has been in the distal conflict in the collecting ducts and collecting tubules we know that there is a epithelial sodium channel in it there is a potassium this is a potassium conductance okay so in the presence of so what happened in the presence of aldosterone there is an increased activity of the sodium and potassium same form since sodium potassium activities form is increased then there is absorption of more sodium because it is also increased the permeability of the or increased the activity of the epithelial sodium channel and also increase the potassium conductance so in the presence of your aldosterone sodium will be absorbed potassium will be excreted okay and also from the alpha intercalated cell there will be there will be hydrogen will be excreted okay this was the normally in the presence of aldosterone but this is the part of your distal this is the part of your collecting duct and collecting tubules i'm talking about now if in alpha inter intercalated cell if it is in unable to secrete hydrogen ion then in if it is not unable to secrete the hydrogen ion from the collecting ducts then what happened there is another pump as well which is helps in the bicarbonate absorption as CO3 if you remember if you I have mentioned there okay so once hydrogen is secreted by a new bicarbonate is formed and it is again being absorbed now since hydrogen is not secreted in, in the lumen in the urine if hydrogen is not secreted in the urine then hydrogen remains inside the body that is also responsible for your metabolic acidosis and if no new bicarbonate ion is formed and absorbed into the body fluid then also it will lead to the metabolic acidosis.
so i hope you have understood it is the defect in the hydrogen ion secretion into the urine and because of that the all consequences is going to happen hydrogen remains in the cell in the interstitial fluid and also there is since hydrogen is not secreted bicarbonate new not bicarbonate new ion is not formed and not absorbed because of that there is a formation of metabolic acidosis okay so if hydrogen ion is not secreted into the urine the urine ph goes high now you you, you know to make the urine acidic this hydrogen ion was responsible as well but since hydrogen ion is less now your urine ph will go high okay goes to the alkaline that is greater than 5.5 okay now as since there is no hydrogen ion excretion okay but the previous from here there will be hypokalemia will be maintained that you have understood there will be no hydrogen this potassium will be not be absorbed okay here this pump is helping this sodium hydrogen this is sorry this is a potassium and hydrogen pump and that potassium and hydrogen pump you when it sees that you potassium is lost into the urine it tries to capture and put it into inside the body since this there is a damage of this hydrogen secretion into the alpha intercalated cell now what is happening this hydrogen is also not secreting this pump is not also working so potassium is not being absorbed and there will be hypokalemia that you have understood okay so hypokalemia you have understood now since urine pH is more okay in that condition you the patient will present with this distal renal tubular acidosis will have increased risk of calcium phosphate kidney stone that is one of the risks of having distal renal tubular acidosis although he is the patient has acidosis it is self as a risk factor there is renal tubular damage as well as patient will have increased calcium phosphate kidney stone there is increased risk of calcium phosphate kidney stone okay and it is due to increased pH of the urine and increased bone turnover okay now we will come to the type 2 Type two is from proximal carbonated tubule. In the proximal, it is also known as the proximal renal tubular acidosis. So proximal part of your renal tubule is damaged, and because of this, there is acidosis. So what happened in this part of the kidney? In proximal carbonated tubule, you know that all things get absorbed: your amino acid, your glucose, your bicarbonate, your phosphate. Everything get absorbed in the proximal carbonated tubule. Now, since there is a damage defect in bicarbonate absorption in the proximal conduit tube, so bicarbonate is not absorbed. You know there is a sodium uh, hydrogen exchanger which uh, sodium is absorbed, hydrogen is excreted out, hydrogen combined with the bicarbonate and form carbonic acid. That carbonic acid dissociated into the water and carbon dioxide and diffused into the cell, which again form carbonic acid and dissociated again into the bicarbonate and hydrogen and bicarbonate is being absorbed. This is the main process of absorption of bicarbonate, and this is only the sole main mechanism of absorption of bicarbonate since bicarbonate is not being absorbed then because of this there will be what there will be bicarbonate loss from your body since bicarbonate is getting lost now you will develop metabolic acidosis bicarbonate ion is getting lost since it is getting lost down the down the your nephron there this cell the alpha intercalated cell of secretion of hydrogen is intact so because of that like distal renal tubular acidosis, it, there is damage of alpha, there is damage in the alpha alkene intercalated cell about hydrogen secretion. But in this type, type 2, there is damage in the proximal part. Okay, so if there is damage in the proximal part, but not in the distal part, so distal part is fine. Now, distal part which secrete the hydrogen ion into your urine. Since hydrogen ion is secreted into the urine, urine pH will be less than 4.5, means acid. Okay, but it is not enough to combat the losses of bicarbonate and because of that metabolic acidosis will be maintained that you have to understand okay so i will repeat again there is a problem in your proximal conduit tubule and because of that you are not able to absorb the bicarbonate but down the nephron everything is fine and hydrogen is able to secrete into the urine since hydrogen is secreted in a normal manner because of that there will be decrease pH hydrogen will decrease the pH in your urine but it is not enough to combat your loss of your metabolic acidosis combat the loss of your bicarbonate and hence metabolic acidosis will be maintained in type 2 
renal tubular acidosis as well that we have to understand here hypokalemia will be maintained okay so the hypokalemia will be there and in this patient there will be increased risk of hypophosphamatic cats that you have to understand because we know that in proximal part of the kid proximal part of your tubules there is the uh, there is always a propens you, they, you know that phosphate is absorbed in the proximal part of the tubule okay and if phosphate is not a, not absorbed then there will be the development of hypophosphatemia and per baby normally present patient with Fanconi syndrome. Actually, the reason for proximal renal tubular acidosis are Fanconi syndrome, okay, multiple myeloma, and carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is acetazolamide. Because of this, this bicarbonate is not going to be absorbed. And if it a patient is hypophosphatemic, it will who will develop the Fanconi syndrome patient. Those whose proximal convoluted tubule is unable to absorb anything, in that case, there will be no glucose who will be absorbed, no amino acid, no phosphate, nothing will be absorbed. And in that case, then Type of patient has increased risk of hypophosphatemic hypophosphatemic cats. Okay. Now comes to the point is uh, hyperkalemic. The, the in this hypokalemia will maintain. You have to understood here was due to this pump. Here also because bicarbonate there is diuresis occurring. Bicarbonate is not being absorbed along with what sodium will also a loss in the urine and body will try to absorb the sodium. Since sodium they will try to absorb, they will excrete the potassium and potassium will loss in the urine but in body there will be maintain of hypokalemia that you have to understood here also now there is another term this is not disorder of your renal tubule rather but it is acts on the distal part of your tubule you, are, you have known that in the presence of aldosterone this whole orchestra was running now if the aldosterone is decreased or aldosterone is there but the receptor is not working so it may it is no if receptor is not working then in, in, in these two conditions there will develop what happened let me explain you in the presence of aldosterone what was happening this receptor was activating this receptor was activating they are activating the sodium hydrogen ATPS pump they are activating this sodium channel they are activating this potassium excretion channel they are activating sodium excretion this hydrogen excretion into the urine this was the normal phenomena now what happened when aldosterone is not there if aldosterone is not there then what happened this whole procedure will be Stop. If so, whole procedure is stopped, then what happened? Now, you this sodium potassium ATP is not active. Since it is not active, this sodium channel is also less active, not active. Say, if potassium is not active, if potassium will not excrete it out, then it will remain inside the cell. If it is remains inside the cell, it will remain inside your body fluid as well, increase in the body fluid as well. And because of that, there will be there will be hyperkalemia in your body. That is the problem. So, hyperkalemia, the other two features will have hypokalemia since aldosterone is not working or it is insensitive. Now, your this all aldosterone, this all channel is not working and potassium is not being secreted out. So, hyperkalemia is maintained. Hyperkalemia is maintained in your body. Now, so and now this, this you have understood. But you have to understand one more thing that hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis will be there. Okay. Urine pH will be less than 0.5, 5.5. Okay, the reason is hypoaldosteronism or aldosterone insensitivity. And there is another thing that in proximal congelated tubule, this ammonia will be synthesis of the proxy in the ammonia in the proximal convoluted tubule is decreased in this syndrome. And because of that, what happened? Your NH4 excretion is decreased in the proximal convoluted tubule and there is a development of acidosis in the body. So in all features, there will be the acidosis. Okay. Now, what are the causes of type 1, uh, type 1 renal tubular acidosis? Number one cause is the amphotericin B toxicity. When you are going to use amphotericin B, you will usually see that there is the hypokalemia and it is due to the amphotericin B, due to the renal tubular acidosis what it is developing. So you have to understand about the amphotericin B. The other causes will be analgesic nephropathy, amphotericin B toxicity, analgesic nephropathy, obstruction, congenital urine tract obstruction or autoimmune acid, disease like acid. In this condition, the patient will develop digital renal tubular acidosis. Okay. If you are going to type, type 2, type 2 I have already discussed that proximal renal tubular acidosis will be developed due to, in the this is defect in the proximal tubule. So there will be Fanconi syndrome or due to 
multiple myeloma or due to carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drug like acetazolamide that will develop proximal renotubular acidosis. When it comes to the hyperkalemic renotubular acidosis, the high in hyperkalemic renotubular acidosis is due to all causes is due to related to the aldosterone. So if the aldosterone is absent or aldosterone is present, but this these are insensitive to the receptor. Then what are the condition? Hypoaldosteronism decrease aldosterone is one of the reason is if in the in diabetic patient there is decreased renin level that is known as the diabetic hypoaldosteronism. Then if you are using to renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism, okay, renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. So if we are inhibiting this renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway by using a C inhibitor, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor which will prevent angiotensin 1 to convert into angiotensin 2 so that will be also in that case also we will have hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis okay type 4 then in case of ARB angiotensin receptor blocker then there are other like NSID, heparin, uh, cyclophosphamide and adrenal insufficiency in adrenal insufficiency NSID use cyclophosphamide and heparin, ARB, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and diabetic hyporenism. These all are the responsible for low aldosterone level in your body. When aldosterone insensitivity will be occur, there will be normal aldosterone, but it will unable to act. So number one will be if you use the diabetics. Okay, if we block the uh, potassium sparing diabetics. So uh, aldosterone is potassium sparing diabetic sparing diabetics. Okay, number one cause of aldosterone insensitivity. Then there will be other cause like nephropathy due to obstruction. Nephropathy due to obstruction. And number three is TMP SMS. TM, TMP SMX. That is cotrimoxazole. The use of high dose of cotrimoxazole, if it is going to damage your kidney, then that will lead to the type 4 renal tubular acidosis. Okay. This is highly, this need to be understand and what are the causes, the causes I have mentioned here but you can see in your first aid there is a uh, mention there you just need to memorize, okay. You need to understand what is going on into the type 1, type 2 and type 3 and how we can differentiate. All, in all cases there is metabolic acidosis, you have understood. But you can differentiate between type 1 and type 2 because type 1 it has high urine pH, type 2 will have low urine pH, okay. Both will have hypokalemia, so urine pH will help to differentiate between the type 1 and type 2, okay. And other other causes are, and what are the main defect. When you are going to differentiate between this and this, all urine will be helpful, urine pH as well as hyperkalemia will be helpful because here is hypokalemia, here is hyperkalemia. If you want to differentiate between this and this, urine pH is all same, but in this case type 2 there will be hypokalemia, but whereas in case of type 4 there will be hyperkalemia. So we can differentiate the, there will be the scenario and we can differentiate which type of renal tubular acidosis is present and we can give answer accordingly, we can manage present accordingly. I hope this is <laughs>